Okay guys, let's uh, let give you guys a quick look at what I'm doing here for my uh, Tabletop Dungeoneers Dice Tower Challenge. Um, I'm going to do a bunker, like a multi-level bunker here and try to um, try to make it functional. Uh, you know, try being the key word. So what I'm going to do is I created the side panel well in the original drawing I did so I just figured I might as well use it as a template for you know what I'm what I'm trying to do uh, and this will hold on while I while I use the knife and everything else and stuff like that for for this mission do that and try to get this one as close as possible as well to utilize as much of the board as possible there's a lot of spots on the board that are damaged this is an older board but we're going to try and make it work uh, we we're supposed to use stuff from around the house so here we go um, but yeah i'm going to tape the tent the stencils on and then i'm going to trace them and try not to knock all my other stuff down. I'm going to turn stuff up here. Um, I'm going to trace it out with a pen and then cut it with a knife. Now you're probably thinking, why are you going to trace it? That's stupid. Well, because it are, tracing it with a pen sets the groove in the foam board so that when you go to cut, your knife will follow that groove naturally. Well, I mean, that's what I believe. I don't know it to be a scientific fact. I just I feel like that's just the way it'll work. So I'm going to trace this out, and then I'll get right back to you guys. Okay, so what I did was I traced out all the exterior lines. So all these lines here, you know, and then I actually traced in these lines because these are going to be where the panels go to create the sliding action. This one will just be an open hole, but this one will be, you know, uh, fixed. And this one will be fixed as well, but there will also be another small little door there. So we did that, and now we're going to try and cut this out, uh, cut out the shapes. And hopefully we can get it in one go. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got the walls cut out. That's what it's going to look like. Next, I'm going to cut the the uh, face panels and then the rear panel. Um, I actually didn't design those yet, but I'm just going to cut out the shapes, and then I'll work with the design after. I think I'm going to actually create a window on this face uh, so you can kind of see in there, um, I don't know, you know, see the dice roll or whatever. And then I got to create the floor panels. So, you know, the top floor with the giant hole. And then I'm going to start creating. Then I'll do the the angle panels that are going to go, like the floors that are going to go in. And I'm going to cut out some slots here so that, you know, it's just tongue and groove. So we'll get to that. And we'll get right back. Okay, guys, here we are so far. Um, I've got the face in. I've got the rear plate in um, you can see it's pretty big on top um, but it should provide enough room for enough to get you know some good some space marines in there and you know even down here I could probably get some I, get, I should be able to get some marines down here and definitely down here if I just want to use this as scenery so that's it uh, we're gonna I got I still got um, I've got to do the floor um, and I have to do the ramps for the dice and then the top you know the top floors and stuff like that so but i'm uh i'm getting there we're going to get going we're going to keep it going um and i'll get back with you guys in a minute all right guys here it is i got it all mocked up um i've got the tiers in there um the ramps you know the uh, the trap door is there but it's just being held down by tape right now so it's just floppy I'm, i gotta figure out some way to have a spring system in there um I'm going to bevel the edges of that opening just a little bit so I can make sure uh, 
I mean, honestly, if I roll dice and they get stuck in there or up there, it's really not that big a deal. Um, Cause you know, as long as you can roll dice openly and people can see it. And there you go. Um, but that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, I'm actually thinking now, because of where these two levels are, I think I'm gonna extend this one out a little bit, kind of like an octagon or like a hex a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit further out just to, you know, I can get my hands in here, no problem. You know what I mean? I can, I can get in there, not a problem, but I wanted to have it a little bit further out so it's easier to see when they're rolled, you know, because um, it's the point of the dice table, right? So, and normally most, most dice towers have a further out uh, bottom tray anyway. So that's going to be it. I think I'm going to try and carve out a window here and use some plastic from like those, you know, when you buy a toy and it's got the plastic box, I'm probably going to use that for this just so you guys can see the dice roll down. But there you go. That's it for now. And we'll get back to you as soon as I make some more progress. Okay, guys, this is probably the last video for this before I try to paint this thing. Um, but here we have the... Um, the bunker slash dice tower for the tabletop engineers January challenge. So I added all the, the brace work. Um, I added some brass etching details. Um, I scribbled in some bullet holes and damage and things like that. Uh, just some more brass etching stuff. And I added all the um, the weapons on the rear. Just some details, just some simple details stuff. Nothing fancy, uh, just bits I had left over uh, from 40K models and I added the floor plates there. Uh, and then we got that side there. So the last thing I'm gonna do is in the actual trap door, I'm gonna put a magnet on one side or probably, yeah, just a magnet in there, two magnets so that it'll stay together until you hit it with the dice and then it'll drop. Um, well, that's about it. We're going to try and get this painted. Um, I have no idea how many, I think I'm going to have to use the airbrush, um, because I can't spray because it's too cold outside. So uh, hopefully I can get it sprayed and at least dry brushed before the end of the month. Uh, so we'll be there soon. All right, guys. Okay. After a few mishaps, look at, you can see with the spilling of the, the pot, she's black. We're going to start painting her. I got to glue this guy back on because he fell off. He's a punk ass, but we'll get it going. I use the cheap solution for painting in the winter, and this is what I get. It's my fault. Um, I don't have a lot of practice with airbrushes, but you can see I made a big old mess here. Um, I'm going to try to clean some of this up. I mean, it is my paint, whatever. But um, I was doing some, use the last of the black that I had in there to get some, uh, what they call zenithal shading in. Hopefully it shows. Uh, pretty cool. Right, we will set this up and I might go live. I don't know. I might go live to paint this thing. We'll see. I got to get it done today though. Okay guys, um, here we are. The last of the ice tower. I finished it up. Just did some dry rushing with some grays. A little bit of metallic couple washes, uh, different null oil wash, and agrass earth shade, and, and stuff like that. Did the bolter, you know, came out pretty good. Um, I didn't put the magnet in yet for the, ta the, the platform here, but I will um, see how, I mean, if it functions without it, then I don't, I guess I don't really need it, but you know, I'll we'll take a quick look here. And I got my handy D6s here. And I got a two up here. 
Mm. Couple fives. Couple sixes. If I was playing Space Marines, I'd have hit. But I did. I got a lot of misses. So my only real problem with this one is I made the shelf too short or too narrow, like short. I should have made it longer uh, so I could easily reach in and grab the dice. You could see them there, you know, but it's easier. It would have been easier if I had made this a little bit longer. But, you know, you live and you learn. Um, yeah, it's like just extend this a little bit, just a little bit further out, you know. Just to so that I could put my hands in without having to tilt. But it does function as a dice tower. It does what it's supposed to do. So I'm not worried about it. And the sun gets stuck up top, but that's okay. I mean, it is what it is. You know, uh, the next one I make will be better for sure. Uh, if I do make another one. <laughs> If I do, I probably will make one for Dungeons and Dragons specifically, um, because that's where I'd be using it, you know, for my players and all that. So the next one will probably be like an actual round tower and stuff like that. But there you go. That's my dice tower for January. I know it's Febu February already, but it's, you know, I was not feeling good. I'm actually still not feeling good. So got me a little time before I could actually do some recording. But as always, guys, like, subscribe, share. If you want to check out the other dice towers that the other guys made, uh, which is very few, check us out on uh, on our Discord server, Tabletop Dungeoneers. Um, tell them Zero sent you. All right, guys, thanks for watching.